Right? No? Wait. <laughs> Five minutes. Mute the mic. Okay.
后四年的外援，那没什么意思。<笑>啊，那我们就先走。Um, all right, so we might start with our uh, next uh, next session, um, and this is uh, Paul Warren, uh, VK1 ATP? Correct. ATP, yeah, that's right, yeah. Um, so he's going to be talking about the open radio um, SDR board, which was a kit from LCA two years ago, and uh, building support for it um, with some standard amateur radio tools. So welcome, Paul. Thank you. I'm on the right thingo. There you are. So that's me. I'm Paul, VK1 Alpha Tango Papa. I'm a Linux system administrator for the ACT or the federal government in Canberra. Um, yeah, you can find those slides there and they're CC by SA if you want to tweak them to your benefit. So that's the open radio SDR board. I have one here. We built those in Auckland. Uh, it's a uh, I've got to plug it back in again. Sure. There, on my GitHub P Warren, there's a bunch of, uh, what are they called, repositories there, and that's the one for this talk. It's written in deck.js, if you care. So, yeah, it's a... Um, yeah, there, it's an HF, basically, SDR. Yeah. Um, the Taylor detector, which is, you know, uh, a clock which is divided by four with in-phase and quadrature into a mixer to get you your IQ baseband. Uh, it has an Arduino control system, which is what I was hacking on uh, to get the ham life support. Uh, it outputs to a sound card and works pretty well with 48 sampling and can go up to I think 96 by default and if you change the amplifier filtering on the output you can get it higher. Unfortunately kits are no longer sold. Uh, the Dragino guys ran out of the bits and I don't think anyone's um, doing that again. They are you know, schematics, Gerbers, all that available from Mark and I have to harass him about it because he hasn't put them online yet. If you want to harass him, do so. Uh, so there's a couple of different um, firmwares already available. There's an interactive one over the serial port, um, and there's one for the Quisk, Quisk software that uh, Mark wrote, which is a Python ness which talks over the serial port again to uh, to the to the board. I decided I wanted to make it work with my favourite um, SDR thing, which is Cubic SDR. Um, cubicsdr.com, um, fully open source, everything, it's really cool and works well. So who knows about FM radio transmissions and what's cool about that baseband there? <laughs> Anyone? Oh, it's got the RDS thing on the, the right at about 70 kilohertz. You can see the RDS peak. There's only one station in Canberra that has that. <laughs> Uh, what do we got there? So yeah, the, you get to get them to talk together. Um, I could have written a plug-in to Cubic SDR, which talks the Quisk protocol that was written for the board, but that was too much like hard work. So I thought I'd use Hamlib. That's much easier, apparently, um, to, <laughs> to write for. And then Cubic SDR supports Hamlib um, natively. You can, you just it just works. So, you know, Hamlib is, as it says, an easy to use library to interface with various radios. So, all different radios of different manufacturers have different serial protocols that are sane or less sane, depending on how you like your serial protocols. And they're all different and they all do basically the same thing, which is tell the radio to tune to this frequency in this mode and a whole bunch of other stuff which I don't really know about. But yeah, it can also interface with the you know, rotators and things for satellite tracking and um, DXing with um, the height of VHF bands. Uh, you point it where you want to talk to. Um, 
Hamlib abstracts all that away. So you have the function set frequency, you give it a number, and it yeah, and you configure Hamlib to then know which radio it's supposed to talk to on which serial port, and then it figures out how to set that radio to the right frequency. So you don't have to worry about all that stuff. Except I did, because I was trying to make the board talk to Hamlib. Um, so that, it comes with this nice little tool, which, you know, rig control uh, model 228, which is a TS430 from Kenwood, remote um, serial port and board, then the command F, so capital F for set frequency and lowercase f for get frequency, and that pattern follows for all the other commands, and that's to set it to 7090 megahertz, uh, 7.09 megahertz on the 40 metre band, which is where I'm usually listening to chase soda people. Summits on the air, for those who don't know, is a award scheme in amateur radio. You go up to a hill, get four contacts, get points. Lots of fun, and you get to see some pretty cool mountains. So there's the one that everyone's supposed to laugh at. How hard can it be? Um, so I know, I have an 817, I can emulate that, because I can actually, you know, I have one, so I can see what the protocol looks like by plugging in a USB to TTL thingo and sending packets and see what happens. I did get a bit of the way through and managed to get the radio to respond to my code from you know, talking to it, but it's a bit annoying. It's five byte blocks uh, with four parameter bytes and one command byte. But yeah, binary coded decimal, is it? It's something weird. So, you know, 7090 is 00, OX70, OX90. Who likes that? No one. It took me several days to get that to a point where it, you know, wasn't actually working. <laughs> well, yeah, working. It sort of worked, and but not reliably, and sometimes it would be backwards, sometimes it would be forwards. Sanity prevails. So, Psionic Oz, VK5ZM, whose real name I forget off the top of my head, he said, try the TS431, it's a bit easier, and that's it, it's just characters. Yay, hey, characters, much easier to put over serial ports. You don't have to worry about bit packing, you don't have to worry about binary coded decimal weirdness. Um, the only difference is that responses can vary in length, unlike the 817, which it's always five bytes. But it's easy because it's a terminal, a terminal character of semicolon, so easy. So once I figure, once um, Sinecore's <coughs> pointed that out to me, I was finished in a few hours, and it all worked. And there's the code. Uh, in the official tree for the open radio board, my pull request was accepted without trouble. And now, a demo. So, <laughs> so let's fire up cubic SDR. And tell it to use. Where's my mouse? And so you can see Kenwood TS5 for the 480 type. Now that's the board. There's the serial port. You may have heard it just clunk as the uh, relay. Um, so you, when you connect to the board, the relay clicks for some reason. I'm not entirely sure why. It seems to be buried in the initialization code uh, somewhere. Um, but the relay clicks so it knows that I'm talking to it. We can have a look at that. Eventually, once it realises it's not actually receiving much, you'll see the, uh, oh, there's a bit of noise here. You can see the serial bytes being um, stuffed over the wire in the middle. So this is the, the serial um, noise. I put a ballon on my sound card, but that didn't seem to help much. Now, what frequency is that tuned to? 146 megahertz, that's not going to work. Uh, 
That's a bit better. So now, you should see when I transmit here, a VK1ATP testing. No, we don't. Well, that's bad. <laughs> hmm, why is that? I, I braved the wrath of the demo gods and I was struck down. <laughs> it is recording from the right place. Doesn't seem to be getting anything. Oh well, well that was supposed to be the demo. It doesn't seem to be working. <laughs> Sorry about that. No, oh, that would be why. <laughs> Now you might see this serial peaks actually pop up. VK1 ATP testing. VK1 ATP testing. There you go. You can see it there in the middle. Woo! <laughs> but now for the trick, if I move up to 7120, I can. It doesn't like me touching the, the sound much. 7.115 megahertz. And we should see it pop up in the passband here. VK1 ATP testing. There we go. There it is. It seems to be on the wrong side, though. Maybe I've got my I and Q backwards. But anyway, there you go. It, it moved frequency and is now picking it up there. Yay. <laughs> Okay, next steps, that's right. <coughs> so, I don't know is the answer there. Um, it, it does, it, the, the board itself can do um, PSK31 transmit, but you have to send it the, you know, the serial stream of bytes that you want to send, which would mean hacking Hamlib as well. So you have to build both ends. Uh, you know, which is doable, but it, it sort of, it does what I want now. <laughs> My motivation has run out. Um, so, yeah, I, I use it at home to receive mostly 7 megs and, and watch the band as I'm doing other things and when interesting signals pop up, I turn on my real radio and, and talk with other, mostly people on top of hills <laughs> doing SOTA activations of their own. So... Uh, no, I have to go back over there. Uh oh, have I broken something? Have I? <laughs> no, that wasn't me. That was the. That was the. That was this cable. This antenna is nothing. Ah, oh, blue tech. Yeah. Nothing to see here. Nothing to see here. So yeah, any questions? Go ahead. Thank you. Uh, it's a pretty basic question. I'm just trying to understand the demonstration now. So I've got an amateur radio license. I've had it for the last four years. I haven't done any digital with it, uh, but I want to. And essentially, I'm trying to understand what you show in terms of the OpenSDR. I understand is the transceiver, and it plugs into the audio jack on your computer to actually give the decoded audio that you then tra transmitted from the other radio. Is that correct? So well, this is an amateur radio transmitting yep. into a dummy load, so yep. it doesn't go much oh, further enough, than yeah. here. And then it's received by the antenna into the board, yeah, which does the IQ baseband 
uh, into a sound card, yep. which is then picked up by Cubic, Cubic SDR, and I didn't set it up then, but you, I could have set it up to demodulate that as lower sideband audio. Right. And then the audio would then come out of the, the, the computer. So what sort of connection do you have to the SDR there? Is that only the audio cable, or do you also have an RS-232? Yeah, so there's audio into the Behringer sound card over there, and then this blue one is the serial co connection to the Arduino. Okay. Which is emulate, emulating a serial port. Okay, cool. Over USB. So, and so Cubic SDR actually controls both, so loads the software over the RS-232 and then gives you some visibility into what signal you're currently Correct. receiving. Correct, so yeah, Cubic okay. SDR will show you what it's receiving uh, in IQ baseband and then we'll also send commands to it to say, tune to this frequency. That, yeah. that was basically what I, what I wanted to do. So cool. I, I wrote the firmware that does that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Over there. Um, you, you did a demo with Cubic SDR. Mm -hmm. Did you also try this with uh, GNU Radio? Uh, I haven't. Um, you can. Uh, GNU Radio has a sound card um, input driver. So you, yeah, you can connect it up to a sound card. I and mean, you're limited to 48K sampling rates, which is really relatively low for SDRs. Um, most, like the the uh, uh, Edis research ones are many megahertz of, or mega samples per second of, of um, sampling. The RTL SDRs are two megahertz, two mega samples. Um, the Blade RFs go up to sort of several hundred, and you, you, know, you can go up from there. But yes, you could potentially do all the same thing that I just did uh, with GNU Radio. The, just the context of that last question um, was around have you used GNU Radio and you mentioned in your answer that there's a 48 kilohertz limitation. That's, just to be clear, is that a limitation in the GNU Radio driver? No, the, the sound card hardware. It's the sound card hardware, okay. No, so it's a hardware yeah. limitation. So you get that with, even with the other Cubic SDR. Yeah, so that's the Cubic SDR is the same. It's nothing to do with GNU Radio, it's the sound card. Yeah, cool. You get a better sound card, you get a higher sampling rate or you get a dedicated um, ADC, you can get much higher. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. A dedicated what SDR kind of, board and what even kind it. of speeds do the sound cards go up to? Like, what's the sound <coughs> rates? Can you uh, achieve? One ninety two is usually about the highest you'll get for a sound card. Okay. Um, one ninety two twenty four bit. Yeah, and twenty four bit at one ninety two kilohertz. So that gives you one ninety two kilohertz because it's IQ two channels. Yeah, so one ninety two down and up. So yeah. hundred and oh, what is it? Yeah, nearly 400, 380 odd. Yeah, cool. Right. So yeah, you can watch the entirety of 40 meters. <laughs> this is pretty cool. Any more? Robert, in front of you. Um, so you mentioned that you could, you could get much higher sampling rates with a dedicated ADC. Is there any open hardware that currently exists that kind of would give you that option? Or does that need Not to be designed? Not that I'm aware of. <laughs> okay. Can we talk about that later? Yeah. Okay. Um, I mean, is that useful? Like, would that be useful for you to have? Or do you, do you get what you need fun. out of it at the moment? It's a Tapper HP SDR system, which is, doesn't use sound card interface. It uses... Um, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, it's all about the lunch. Yeah, it's a, so yeah, there's a Tapper SDR, uh, which is open, all open source, but it uses Ethernet packetized IQ instead of... Uh, sound card, so you're not limited by the sound card sampling rate. Yeah, it has its own ADCs inside it, right? That's right. It's a high-speed AD converter and FPGAs and yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, other other parts. Ah, excellent. <laughs> well, as long as they as long as they plug all the cables in. Yeah. So you know, if I if I run out of time. No, no. No, because I have. Bonus content. So I talked about this, um, I think, in Auckland when I did my open radios talk. It arrived two years later. So now I have a, a, a portable SDR, it's called. Um, it's, yeah, it's, yeah. There you go. So yeah, it's a very small portable SDR. It was a finalist in the Hackaday contest a couple of years ago, crowdfunding campaign. Got through at the last minute. Um, 
I've hacked away at it a bit. That's really small text. It now has an off switch because of me. <laughs> so, yeah, it, it, it has a few limitations um, so at the moment. Um, the hardware is here, the software is very early days. Uh, it does work. Uh, it's rather deaf at the moment because no one sort of made the filters go properly. And there's an LNA, which I don't think we've turned on at all. Um, it does HF through to 170 megahertz, I think, at the moment. Um, they are Morse paddles at the bottom. I don't know Morse. I don't even know I iambic, is it, that you use these for? Um, I'll learn because I have a tool now, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so come and help out. Um, where have we got to? There we go, there's the link, uh, GitHub link. Um, yeah, it's an, uh, it's an STM32 underneath, so a 32-bit ARM, reasonably powerful ARM board, an F7, I think. So it's got a whole bunch of stuff it can do. Um, yeah, my off switch code just turns off the, all the peripherals that it can and then puts it in standby mode. You then have to wake it up with the reset button. <laughs> Eventually I'll figure out how to get it to wake up on interrupts so we can go tweak like that to wake it up or something like that. I'll we'll figure that out. But yeah, there's a lot of work to be done. It only does lower, upper and AM at the moment, um, which was cool at the airport. You could actually listen to the tower in this little package. That was pretty cool. Um, that, of course, produced much nicer audio. <laughs> so yeah, that was my bonus content. Here it is if you want to come and grab me and we'll have a look at it. There you go, that's me done. Any more questions on the, um, the portable SDR? The bonus content? Anyway, you can go demo. Yeah, sure. come and see me if you want to have a look. After, the, after this and uh, we'll grab a demo. And thanks very much, Paul, for... Um, Coming and talking yeah, about no that. Uh, thank you. Yeah, it was uh, very interesting. And uh, hopefully you can join in his hacking of uh, some of these SDR projects as well. Cool.